prepare our hearts. I'd like to read to you from the book of 1 John, the fourth chapter. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is true love, that we love God, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sin. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God gives, lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. Here is the lesson. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do give you thanks for your mercies that endure forever. We thank you for your love for us that so inspired us and transforms our, transforms our hearts. We ask you as you touch us today that we in turn would touch the hearts of others and inspire them by the good news of what Jesus Christ has done for them. For it is in his precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, for those uh, online, there is a download on our website at holytrinityeastpgh.com. You can download the handout that goes along with our lesson today and follow along. For those in our service, of course, this is in your bulletin. You're welcome to pull it out. And so as we look at this, one of the things I'm reminded of, what a great time of year it is. These, this is my favorite season. Even as much, if not more so, than Christmas, I love the preparation for Easter. I love Easter celebration. Because it reminds us of the most important thing in the world, that God loved us so much that he would rather die for us than live without us. That while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ gave himself for us. He didn't wait for us to get our acts together. He didn't wait for us to call him. He didn't wait for us to figure it out and try to get to him and find a bridge or a road or a path somehow to get to heaven. God said, I need to make a way for you. And so I'm going to gift you with a word of love and forgiveness. And that word of love and forgiveness was Jesus. And so today we're also going to hear how his passion played out for us because after all we are greedy, selfish people and we don't like love, we don't like peace, we don't like the joy that God brings and so we do the thing that we do with everything in this world, we kill it. Well, Easter's coming. We'll talk about what happens when you try to kill God's love and peace and message of forgiveness because there's something good on the other side of that death. But in today's lesson, I want to take a look at how impressive it is that God would love us so much and what that means for us, because that's what we've been looking at over this last 40 days, haven't we? We've been looking at the fact that God loves us so much that God transforms our hearts, and so when we are transformed, we truly love each other. And that's what we've been looking at over the course of these last 40 days. And so I kind of want to summarize for you those lessons that we learned in this series and during these 40 days of what John is trying to teach us about God's love. And the very first thing that we looked at several weeks back when we started this Lenten journey was that not even Jesus traveled in his journeys by himself. You see, I've got one major problem with American Christianity. Well, many other ones, but one major one. And that is, we have this individualistic idea that it's all about Jesus and me. We miss the fact that not even Jesus walked in this journey of life by himself. Jesus was always communally related. First of all, obviously, with his mother, and then his fellowship of disciples. But he was also always in relationship with the Father and the Son. Jesus was always in relationship with we too are called as Christians to be in relationship with each other. And then we learned the next week that we are also the fruit of the gift of Jesus, the, Je the Jesus gift of life. So we are the result of that. And so the great news is that our purpose in this life is that we might have fellowship with another, and we are brought together today by one thing. Uh, I will tell you, we are talking about uh, the Pitt Panthers and the basketball team, and they didn't do so well. But no, none of you care about that. Well, okay, few of you care about that. Many of you don't. Many of you don't care about how the Penguins did the other day. Just doesn't matter. Some of you don't really care about the Steelers. So those things don't bring us together. What brings us together is what? The name of 
Jesus. That is the only name that has the power to bring this diverse group of people together in one place at one time, the name of Jesus. And that's why I'm here, and I know that's why you're here today. And so we are brought together by our common interest, and that is Jesus. And then the great news we learned several weeks ago is that we are now the life-giving agents of God. How awesome is that? That Jesus doesn't end with that. Jesus ends with giving us the gift of the Spirit so that we too might be giving, left giving his life to the rest of the world. A couple of weeks ago, then, the third thing we learned was that God exposes our sin as a result or in order to help us grow. See, we often think of this in the reverse way. We've got to repent, and then we come into relationship with God. That's not the way the Christian faith works. The way the Christian faith works is that God comes into relationship with us, and once we are in relationship with God, God starts to transform our lives. But God doesn't do it in a vicious manner. God doesn't do it because God is cruel or mean or unkind. God wants us to be in fellowship with each other. And if we are to be in fellowship with each other, that means that we need to be open, honest, sharing our humanness, our weaknesses, our failures, our successes. And then what God does, not to expose us, not to embarrass us, not to pick on us, not to call us out, not to send us to hell. God wants to improve our lives. And so God reveals to us those things in our lives that we need to get straightened out. Because after all, God wants to make a beautiful symphony of your life. I could use a million different illustrations. You are a beautiful tapestry. You are a symphony. And maybe it's not beautiful right now. Maybe it's a work in progress. So am I. But the point is, is by the end of your life, when you enter into the church triumphant, we are going to be offering to God a beautiful symphony of our lives because of the transformation that God is doing in your life right now. So there is no place in the Christian life for loathing or self-hatred because you are a beautiful symphony of God. Two weeks ago, we went on to learn that if we love God, we are to show how much we love God by loving each other. Because the true love of God is expressed by living in community with other Christians and by our investing our lives in each other's lives. And our actions ultimately speak louder than our words, don't they? People don't care how much you say you love them. People care about how much you show that you love them. Because that's ultimately what's important. And then last week, this is what we hammered through last week as we looked and finished with our study of the book of 1 John. We are created to go through this life alone. That's silly. We're created to go together with one another. God has created us for fellowship. We are called to build relationships with each other so that in my time of need, I can get help. And in your time of need, I can be there to help you. I've said this several times over the course of the last few weeks. I hate the following phrase. You know what I'm going to say? God helps those who help themselves. I can't stand that phrase. Or, better yet, God never gives you more than you can handle. Oh, God does give you more than you can handle. There are times, seriously, people, if you've lost your spouse, if you've lost a child, I don't know how you make it through these things without other people. You can't. You need help. You've got to stop trying to do it on your own. God gives us other people to help us in our times of need. So it is not a weakness to depend upon each other, but it is a strength to admit that we truly do need each other. Even Jesus himself depended on the care and the extravagant love of those whom he surrounded himself with. So here's the good news. Look at the box at the bottom of the page. I'm just going to read this for you today as a closing or homily. Jesus is God's word of love for the world. God, Jesus is our inspiration to love each other on our journey in this life. Some of our relationships are going to be lifelong with your parents, maybe with your spouse. Others are going to be short-term, maybe with your spouse. I don't know. Depends on your spouse, I guess, right? Still others are going to be chance meeting of strangers that you meet them in passing. You're going to adore some people, am I right? There are some people you're going to like a lot and you're going to enjoy being around them. There's still other people that are going to vex you 
and frustrate you and challenge you. Am I right about that? But here's the great thing. How we treat all of our relationships ultimately is of significance and demonstrates the love that we have of God. Even the people that drive us crazy, God has called us to love. And so I'm going to do something that I don't get to do too often. I'm going to sing for you today. I've got a song I want to share. Those who've been a part of our later service, our 1115 service, we've done this several times over the course of the last few weeks. In fact, you're welcome to sing with me if you know the song, but I want to introduce it to our seniors who may not have heard this song. It's a song that I wrote specifically for the purpose of this campaign. And we really do need each other. So I'd like to share that with you today. And Terry's going to put the words up there. And so I enjoy, ask you to just sit back and relax, enjoy the song, or sing with me if you'd like. absolutely crazy. And guess what we're supposed to do? Love them. And yes, there are people that we're just very fond of, and we're called to love them. There are people that we just adore. Heavenly Father, our relationship with you, our maturity is demonstrated by the love that we have for each other. And while we were yet sinners, you loved us. And so God, while people are yet driving us crazy, we're going to give ourselves and invest ourselves in their lives and love them. And we just give you thanks for everybody that's gathered here today. May you strengthen and encourage them for this Holy Week season. 
May you empower them by your love. May you remind them once again of how deep and your love is for them. For it is in Jesus' name that we give thanks and pray. Amen.